Hi, I'm uh, Jim Thatcher, and I'm going to be presenting from my uh, lovely extra bedroom, putting Mapper on a map, cartographic visualizations of topological data analysis, which is uh, funded by the NSF in an REU site, and I'll give the full acknowledgments to all the people that worked on this project at the end. So to outline the talk, First, I'm going to introduce uh, topological data analysis and specifically Mapper, which is an algorithm and, and tool from it. Then, uh, since this research is involved in electoral districting, I'll explain that, specifically communities of interest. Then I will uh, go over how we use Mapper to try to detect communities of interest. And finally, I'll wrap up by talking about the limits of and other approaches from TDA. Um, to get underway. As the name uh, suggests, <laughs> um, topological data analysis attempts to analyze large data sets using techniques from mathematical topology. It was originally a move to use algebraic topology on extremely large and diverse data sets, and it's now expanded beyond that, but that's sort of the, the core of it is to sort of study the shape of data. What points are near one another? Where do holes exist? The idea being that since topology is really, really good at that stuff, this might be useful for high dimensional data that may be noisy or incomplete. Map, the mapper algorithm specifically was developed by Singh et al. in 2007. And that's, that's what we are going to talk about today. Mapper is kind of cool because it uh, combines two data science techniques, the first being singular value decomposition and the other being agglomerative clustering. And to do that, and it does that to try to find similar data points in uh, high dimensional data, and it outputs it in a graph of uh, sort of interconnected nodes and, and edges. So the way Mapper works is uh, it first uses SVD to find vectors through your data set, which account for the greatest amount of variance in the entire set's dimensionality. If you think of your data set as a point cloud in n-dimensional space, where n is the uh, number of variables that you have, SVD here is trying to create two vectors that when the data set is projected along them, account for the most variance, uh, roughly. For those wondering, or for those more familiar with Mapper, there's actually a bit more going on behind the scenes with this algorithm. Specifically, after the filter function, here SVD, but theoretically you could use something else, and before the clustering, Mapper draws a series of cover images that segment out the data points such that each data point belongs to at least one and potentially more cover images. And then it clusters based on those cover images. This is why, as we'll see later, specific data points may belong to more than one cluster, something that accounts for both Mapper's strength in detecting similarities within messy data that other algorithms might uh, not, and also its difficulty when you're trying to place it on a Euclidean map. A more uh, mathematical representation of the process might look like this. Yes, excellent. On the left, we have the original data. The filter, it's shaped like an F, an eight. The filter function f reduces the dimensionality. The cover images then collect the nodes which are clustered into a representation of the data on the right. Each point on the right is a group covered by the selected covers. Notice the overlap, and in this example it's set to 10%, but that the edges exist between the nodes in a way that maintains the relations and holes found in the original data set on the left. Believe it or not, Topology cares a lot about holes. Again, I'm happy to dive into this, the limits of my mathematical ability uh, during the questions. But uh, what I want to emphasize here is that a number of decisions are made in terms of how this algorithm will function. The filter function itself, here SVD, the number of intervals in the coverings, the acceptable overlap, and the clustering technique itself, single linkage, complete linkage, ward, et cetera, will all produce slightly different results. These decisions will be important when we discuss the limits and next steps of this work. So forgive me if you've heard this, but did y'all know that the US is redrawing its electoral districts? So as mentioned, this is part of a larger NSF-supported project that explores how various approaches from math, computer science, data science, and geography and cartography might be used to address questions of fair districting. And don't get me started on the entire idea of fair. 
It's historically and socially constructed. There's no perfect district. But what we can do is ask if some of the new tools we have available to us as a society might produce districts that we as a society agree meet our current needs better than others. So here we asked if Mapper might help us identify communities of interest and if and when they're being split by districts. What are communities of interest? Glad you asked. So much like the rules of districting in general, there's quite a lot of variance with, what, with respect to what exactly a community of interest is. However, according to the National Conference of State Legislators, 27 states include some nation, notion of preserving communities of interest when districting. Of course, how one goes about this and what exactly the communities entail is, is vague and, and at times honestly contradictory. California has one of the most precise definitions written into their state constitution, and I think it's worth quoting to give you an idea of, of what we're talking about here. A community of interest is a contiguous population which shares common social and economic interests that should be included within a single district for purposes of its effective and fair representation. Examples of such shared interests are those common to an urban area, a rural area, an industrial area, or an agricultural area and those common to areas in which people share similar living standards, use the same transportation facilities, have similar work opportunities, or have access to the same media of communication relevant to the election process. Communities of interest shall not include relationships with political parties, incumbents, or political candidates. Okay. And so with that in mind, we said about thinking about a place and, and data that we might use to, to try mapper to find communities of data uh, interest in these messy, incomplete data sets. And we settled on Mecklenburg County, North Carolina. Mecklenburg is home to the city of Charlotte, which makes it fairly populous, diverse, and it contains some interesting urban and rural splits. It's also been the site of a series of court cases regarding gerrymandering that have seen its electoral districts redrawn repeatedly. And worth noting, a couple of the uh, participants in this project have personal ties and experiences of Mecklenburg. And this is something that I think it's important to consider when uh, you're looking at sort of the inherent biases and choices embedded within algorithmic approaches. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip over much of the process by which we selected and determined the location of variables. We worked from ACS data at the block group level, and here you can see a correlation table of the various potential variables considered. I apologize that it's a little blurry to read, and I'm happy to provide a higher resolution image for those interested. All code, data, and outputs are in the process of being made public. On the right, after consideration, you can see the list of variables that we used. These became the original, original dimensions of the data set, which Mapper will reduce and then analyze. So running that through Mapper multiple times, we ended up with a, a fairly consistent result that looks like this. Uh, and this is that first step of Mapper's output, the nodes in a graph, which are, which are then clustered. What I've circled there are the results of the agglomerative clustering for three clusters that I'd like to discuss. Their demographic characteristics and spatial distributions are worth considering in the concept of Mecklenburg's districting. But looking at my time, I'm gonna focus on clusters one and three as their spatial and demographic characteristics suggest, though do not definitively demonstrate common gerrymander techniques might be in practice. So here, and forgive me, I have a slight cold, here we have cluster one compared to uh, three instances of the North Carolina State Senate District. You'll note there are five uh, state Senate districts in Mecklenburg County. Cluster one consists of 135 block groups and around 226,000 people, which makes it too large to be found in a single district, despite its relative geographic contiguity. But what's interesting and suggestive here is how it has been distributed between four of the five districts in all but the court ordered plan where it was in three. This cluster is characterized by lower levels of wealth, education, and home ownership. It also has a racial makeup distinct from the rest of the county in being a majority non-white. And what's further fascinating here is that we find this cluster has close to 50% of the population of District 40 in the 2011 plan on the left, and close to, but not quite, 50% of the total population of District 38 in the 2019 plan. In each case, based on available data, it falls just short 
of being the majority of this district. And given the relative spatial contiguity, the demographic makeup, and the repeated approaching but never quite reaching the majority of a district, this suggests, but does not prove, that uh, this group may have been the target of racially motivated ger gerrymandering through the practice of cracking. Significantly more detailed analysis would be necessary to demonstrate this conclusively. However, Mapper successfully identified its possibility using only the selected data. And here's cluster three. Somewhat on the opposite end of the socioeconomic spectrum as determined by the data analyzed, cluster three falls into a single node that holds just over 55,000 people in its population. This cluster is significantly more rural, more white, wealthier, and has a higher percentage of children living at home, as well as higher levels of education than the rest of uh, Mecklenburg County on, on average. Geographically, this group is significantly more dispersed than cluster one. However, we find it split between fewer districts. I'm, I'm as surprised as you. In the court-ordered plan, the middle one, uh, there are only two, and population-wise, they're almost entirely within one. Taken together, we start to see that Mapper can detect potential communities of interest either being grouped together despite dispersed ge geography or separated in, uh, in, uh, in light of it. By mapping them, we can begin to suggest areas for greater investigation of potential gerrymandering. So I want to raise three questions that are guiding the next steps of this project. First, a limitation of any algorithmic approach based upon abstracted data is whether or not these groups we have found actually represent communities. This can be asked in a number of ways that will result in different answers. For example, for districting, the question is whether or not they would be legally or politically accepted as such. But there's also a deeper question of what that means for people living on the ground in those areas. We found groups that an algorithm whose parameters and inputs we chose, found. We can certainly suggest that these groups do share similarities along those selected axes of consideration. But whether or not that's meaningful to those people represented requires nuanced, in-depth, qualitative work that an algorithm simply can't provide. Second, Mapper is complicated. Compared to something like k-means, which you can work out by hand pretty quickly, and what it's doing and how it selects things becomes less clear. So it's worth asking, what is it telling us that other approaches are not? As such, we actually did compare these results to both traditional hierarchical cl clustering and to just SVD. And in the former, compared to uh, hierarchical clustering, Mapper uh, performed significantly better than hierarchical in finding clusters that might otherwise not be detect detected. It picked up things that uh, other that the hierarchical approaches did not. But in the latter, it, it didn't. So we're presently working through why this is occurring in a more rigorous manner. Right now, it's not a significant uh, result. It's just like an anomalous one that we want to look into more. And of course, again, are we finding anything here that couldn't be found by talking to people, by, by reading a newspaper? Perhaps. Or perhaps all we're finding is something that a court or political party might be willing to accept due to the uh, fetishization of data science and its approaches. I say all of this as someone deeply committed to these processes. However, in a way that will not eschew critical and reflexive examinations of all parts of the process. Which leads me to the fun, cheery conclusion of whether or not Mapper might be used to draw districts. The short answer is, as you saw from the clusters found, not on its own. This disjuncture between Euclidean distance and distances constituted by the other variables creates difficulties with respect to contiguity and compactness. There are a number of approaches that might address this. And last year, I showed you one based on uh, travel time. Today, I'd like to show the earlier uh, results from one based on a minimum spanning tree. So when a minimum spanning tree is cut, then it results in two different branches. We can think of each branch as a district composed of contiguous block groups that are clustered by similarities in their values. And so for six, six districts, we wanna make five cuts such that the result is six branches, really trees, that are contiguous and relatively population balanced while emphasizing similarity of the variables under consideration. And no, I'm not quite sure why there are a couple block groups missing there. I need to go back through the data. Um, is this result better than other districts? 
that's something that we as a society have to decide. And with that, here are the people that worked on this project. Thank you very much. <laughs>